This is One on One. Richard E. Poulton, author of the book, The Life and Times of Fred Wesley Wentworth, the architect who shaped Patterson, New Jersey, and its people. Interesting book cover. Outside the Fabian. Was Fabian a uh, famous theater in Patterson? Fabian was uh, the theater, one of the great theaters in Patterson, and uh, named after uh, the, the entrepreneur who uh, developed a, a whole range of theaters here in New Jersey. Richard, I'm curious about this guy, Fred Wesley Wentworth. Who is this guy and why is he worth writing an entire book about? He's an architect who uh, comes from one of the most distinguished uh, New England families. Uh, his family had been in New Hampshire since the 1630s. Right. Um, and he graduated from Dartmouth in 1887. I have a picture of him right there. Yeah. And, and of all the places in the world for an Ivy League uh, blue blood to arrive, he picks Patterson, New Jersey and it settles here in 1889. And uh, uh, his story is really the story of the growth of Patterson, uh, and it encompasses a whole array of, of issues that, uh, that have shaped our city. For and example? For example, he, he, he was, uh, for the first 20 years of his life, or for, of his career here in Patterson, he's the architect for the leading industrialists and leading citizens of the, of, of the area. Uh, designing large homes, uh, supervising the construction of the courthouse here in Patterson, designing schools, and uh, all of the civic institutions. Well, look at the, right there. Is that the uh, Atwood family? That's the Atwood family in a home that he designed in Oradell for another New Englander who moved to New York and made his fortune. The, Mr. Atwood was uh, made made a significant amount of money by bringing grapefruit from Florida. Uh, into the into the American market. Is that right? And and that's one of the things about that era is that Wentworth had a whole array of clients: Garrett Hobart, John Griggs, who was uh, a vice a, a, a governor of the state of New Jersey and the attorney general of the United States. Out of Patterson. All out of Patterson. You know, it's interesting. We should remind folks that we're doing while well, one-on-one tapes uh, our programming over at Lincoln Center and the Tisch WNT studio and all around. This is our primary studio in Patterson. New Jersey. Patterson is not as well known as it should be as an amazing city. Absolutely. And, and in fact, driving in uh, to the studio just across the, st across the way. We should make it clear we're part of the St. Joseph's campus here, St. Joseph's uh, Hospital campus. Right. Go ahead. In full view of your site is a building that Wentworth designed for, that was occupied by Curtis Wright. And that's the location where the airplane engine that Lindbergh used. Hold to on, the Wright brothers? Well, it's the, the Wright brothers, but they got it. They they developed. Curtis Wright was was largely an airplane engine Go ahead. manufacturing firm uh, that was a combination of the Wrights and and, uh, and Curtis. And for for many years, they were based here in Patterson, in a building Wentworth designed. And those are the aircraft engines that uh, that flew the Enola Gay and Lindbergh's uh, wow. Spirit of St. Louis. Just a f and 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 his life is intertwined with many of the leading citizens and many of the leading industries uh, that, that were in that era. You know, it's, f it's funny, my family uh, comes out of Newark, New Jersey, and there's a long history over 100 years. Um, so my, my grandparents, uh, my grandmother when she was alive, were talking to me about it, my father talks to me about it. Uh, but your family and Patterson, over 100 year association with the city of Patterson. Absolutely. Talk about it. Well, um, my great grand uh, great grandparents, like so many uh, uh, of, of Americans, uh, uh, came here about a hundred years from? ago uh, from Eastern Europe. From uh, it, Patterson has a lot of immigrants or a lot of people because it was a textile town. They came from textile cities throughout Europe, uh, whether it was Macclesfield, England, or Bialystok, or Ludge in Poland. All textile towns. They came here to be. What does it believers. mean a textile town? Well, a town that where the principal industry, or or a principal industry, is the manufacture of, of of textiles. Patterson was the Silk City. So people would come here. Immigrants would come here who had an, a specialty, who knew how to work in that field. Absolutely, who were weave, skilled weavers or uh, had a, had an experience in 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 uh, in in Italy or in uh, Switzerland. It's right. hard to believe, but there was a big Swiss community here in Patterson, uh, but also Eastern Europe. Uh, the, the, one of the roots of the, of the um, 
a Mideastern community that's so, so populous here in Patterson now comes from, comes from Syria, people who were in the silk industry in, in, in the Mideast. So the silk, the silk Road runs through Patterson, and that's, that was part of, the, part of the story of the city. And it was also Wentworth's story, because he was here in that, in that golden era when fortunes were being made. I'm curious about something, Richard. The connection between architecture and a city, the life of a city, the culture of a city, the brand, one of my favorite words, of a city. Right. The connection between architecture and a city. Am I making too much of it? No, not at all. And I think that Patterson has an amazing opportunity to, to rebuild its brand, as its identity, through its architectural history. And, it, and, and there's efforts being made to do that in the Great Falls National Park. Yeah, time out. So I think Patterson, I think the falls. Yeah. But Not enough. A lot more. The downtown, in, in 1902, there was a fire that devastated the city of Patterson, the greatest fire in New Jersey history. And it was a tragic event, but it was also a transformative event. And if you're the leading architect in the city, it's a remarkable opportunity. A fire so, is an opportunity? Oh, absolutely, because in a city like Patterson, which was very prosperous at the time, there was a, a demand to rebuild almost immediately. So that the downtown of, of Patterson is really a period piece of buildings that were built between the Great Fire of 1902 and the Great Depression when development essentially stopped. Now, a lot has been lost to urban renewal and, and, and redevelopment. Go, go back to the shot of the Fabian again, if we could, the opening shot. So the Fabian, do you know when it was built? Yeah, it was built in the late 1920s, opened in the late 1920s, probably 1928. Hold on, because th there's a reason I asked that. That's in the middle of the Depression. Well, just before the Depression. The 1929 was the stock market crash. Okay, so hold on. The 30s was, was really the Depression. If the Fabian had not been built then, it would not have been built. Absolutely not. Absolutely. There it is. Absolutely not. So and it had to be built at that time. It, it did, and it was, it was part of a movement that was going on to, of where downtowns were the center of entertainment and culture and life. And the Fabian Theater is, is the quintessential Wentworth building because it contained office building, an office right. building for the leading citizens of the town, this fabulous movie theater, and a little known fact is that it had a, had a health club in the basement. Get right? out of here. It did. So people lived in Patterson, worked in Patterson, played in Patterson. Th this was, this it, was like a little new, I don't want to say a little New York, because no, it had an own, its own identity. It had its identity. own identity, and it was, it was a major metropolitan area with five movie theaters yeah. and two major department stores. Go and get this book, The Life and Times of Fred Wesley Wentworth, the architect who shaped Patterson, New Jersey, and his people. Richard E. Poulton. Richard, thank you for joining us and bringing this history to us. Great job. One Thanks. on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Sun National Bank, Qualcare Inc., New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, PSENG, Fedway Associates Inc., the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Cone Resnick. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.